Hello again, chapter 17, The Spectacular Now Novel. After finishing up three streets, we're out of rolled newspaper and still haven't run across my car. Amy pulls over and brings a bundle from the background to the gap so we can get some more ready to throw. She shows me her method of folding, then rolling, then slapping on the rubber band. But there is no way I can keep up with her once we got started. Her hands are magic. I swear the girl gets three done for everyone I finished. How many of these things have you folded in your life? I ask as she pitch another finished product onto the floor board by my feet. Mm, I don't know, her hands keep working. It feels like about a hundred million. I ask if her mom has a day job too, but she, <coughs> but she says no. The paper route in her own job. Her mom's boyfriend is on is on disability with a bad back. He collects his disability check and buys and sells things on eBay. That's when he's not sitting around watching TV in his suit pants. Sorry. A lot of kids might have sounded bitter about that, but not Amy. Her voice is a gentle, like she is talking about someone with a terminal disease. We trade a few stories about our parents. Her mom's a real gamble, gamble a ah, holic. It sounds like to me. The Indian casinos, the lottery, bingo, anything to try to make a quick back. Only she hardly ever wins. She has the luck of an armadillo trying to cross a six-lane highway. Still, Amy doesn't judge her. Losing the gas bill money is just a fact of her for her. She probably thinks it happens to everybody. Every, everybody. Sorry. I mentioned a few things about mom and Gitch and my real dad's office at the top of the Chase building. Nothing too big. Nothing too deep. Although I have the feelings I have the feeling that I could say anything to Amy and she wouldn't judge me. Her voice would remain cool and soft, like a pillow to lay your head on a, on after a hard day. She is cute too, in a nerdy sort of way. You know, the look, glasses that ride down on the nose, pale skin from staying inside too much, mouth hanging slightly open in that classic nerd mouse breeder style. But she has full lips and sweet, little blonde eyebrows and a nice slender neck. Her hair, her hair isn't pure, scandy, Navian blonde like CDs. It's more dirty blonde and sort of link. And she doesn't have the have the have the jaw blue eyes either. Hairs are pallid, more like a public swimming pool. Still, she has a way about her that makes me want to. 
want to do something for her, not to her, for her. <coughs> you know what? I say, if you find my car, I, I'm still going to help you finish off your route. You don't have to do that, she said. But her eyes tell me she's like nothing better. I know I don't have to, I tell her. I want to. Once we get a good size bag of, of paper folded, we are on the road again. Still no sign of my car. But the future, we go, but the Sorry, but the further we go, the better we work together. I start calling her captain and tell her to call me special agent danger. Instead of having her point out which house to throw to buy, which house to throw to buy, saying something boring like "yeah" or "this one," I coach her into yelling. Fire the tor Fire the torpedo Special Agent Danger Fire the torpedo After a After a while we're zipping down the road at almost the speed limit and I never miss a yard. You know what? she says I think this is the first time I've ever actually had fun doing this. We make a good team. You think so? You think so? There is a hopeful look in her eyes. Absolutely. Then all of a sudden there is there it is my car sitting sideways in the middle of a lawn. One of Amy's customers lounge yet. Jesus, I say. Jesus, I say. I say. I can't believe I walked all that way from here. It must be a mile and a half. What it? What's it doing in the yard? She asks. She asks. For a second. The vision of my cutting cross lungs yelling at the top of my lung lungs yelling at the top of my lungs shots shoots through my mind I don't know I said I guess it's a pretty safe place to leave a car if you have to but I probably better get it of before these people wake up or the cops come by. Turn turns out the car's out of the gas, which is a real relief. I hate to think I don't I didn't have a good reason for leaving it here. For leaving it there. Getting it off the lawn in a simple in concept but not so simple to actually to Amy gets behind the wheel to steer and I push from behind the problem is that the yard is really spongy so it it takes all the effort I have by the time we finally get it parked Decently by the curb. I feel like I'm about ready to pass out. I guess I'll have to go get some gas. I say as Emmy step out of the car. <coughs> She's like, I guess so. And look back at my car like it's some annoying person that broke up our good time. There is a convenience store convenience store just a couple of blocks over. I'll drive you. What about the rest of your route? That's alright. I can finish it by myself, I'm sure. 
you probably need to get some to get home but I'm like no way captain I said I'll help you finish and whatever special agent danger says he'll do he does <clears throat> do you roger that the light flips back on it on in her eyes yes no you have to say ten four say ten four I roger that she looks down her pale eyelash eyelashes hiding her eyes ten four she say I roger that it take about another hour to finish throwing her papers and I keep her spritz high most of the time but both of us lose a little enthusiasm toward the end most mostly because we know time is running out she'll have to go back to her empty house and I'll have to go back to meet the race race the race race of mom and gitch we go by the convenience store for a couple of gallon of gas and i buy you <coughs> and i buy us both donuts and strawberry guava drink after getting my car gassed up we send we were we are standing there in the middle of the street and she has this sort of shy look on her face like we've just been on a first date and she's wondering if I'm going to kiss her. You know what, Amy Finicky, I said. I have a pretty routine night last night until you came along and found me. She looks like she wants to say something back, but can't find the right words. So I'm like, where do you eat lunch Monday? And she's mm, in the cafeteria, which of course is where a red-blooded nerd would eat. So I'm, oh, dude, that's slay. <clears throat> and she's like, it is. I can tell she feels like she says something stupid. So I go, I don't mean you eating rarely. I mean the food's lay. No, are you kidding me? I eat in the cafeteria every day, if their food was better. They have pizza on Monday, she said. Oh, yes, I said. Like that's the greatest news I've heard all year. I am the man when it comes to pizza. Why don't I meet you outside the south, the south too? And we'll eat pizza and relive our greatest triumphs, triumphs, triumphs of newspaper delivery. Really? She looks at me like I might just be planning a practical joke of something kind. I'll be there right after algebra. Me too, she said. I mean, not after algebra, but after calculus, or I mean after French. I got mixed up. I give her hand squeeze. Wish me luck for when I get back home. I'll need it. Good luck, she says. And she's so earnest, I'm tempted to believe it just might help. Finished.